Hi guys, and welcome back to another IbraCorp video. Unraid 7 Beta is here, bringing a host of new features and improvements. In this video, we'll go through all the latest additions and changes, from enhanced ZFS support and new VM manager features, to integrated plugins for file management, GUI search, and outgoing proxies. Now, I'm keen to learn what's new in Unraid 7 with you, uh, as currently it's in beta, the potential of ZFS hybrid pools and how these changes can impact our home server setups is pretty important. And I think it's gonna be really worth understanding prior to Unraid 7 fully coming out officially. Now, this is a beta software, so we recommend testing it on non-critical servers only. And to save you guys doing it on your production servers, I'm gonna go ahead and break my own rules and do it on mine with you. So let's get stuck into it. So here we are on our Unraid server Osiris. Um, we're currently running 6.12.13. Now I'm gonna walk you through what I typically do when I have a major server upgrade. Feel free to take the parts that interest you um, and maybe you have your own process that you would like to share with others. Drop it in the comments below. We can all learn from each other. First thing I usually do is make sure that I have a recent app data backup. So we can go to our uh, backup restore app data plugin there. And if I go to status log, um, it's obviously currently not running, but I can see that it ran during the night and took a backup for us. So I know there's a, a backup sitting there ready, um, in, just in case something goes sideways. Then we come into our Docker tab and I will begin stopping all Docker. So I just hit stop all and let that do its thing. If you are using virtual machines, do the same thing. Now, one thing to always keep in mind when you're shutting down services, starting up services, think about any sort of dependencies and the order that you may have to do those starts and stops in. So for example, if I go back to Docker, one thing um, you may or may not have noticed is when I actually list these, they're in a specific order based on possible dependencies, then by priority to me on how important I want that service back up. So if I give you a quick overview while these shut down, Nginx proxy manager, I usually want my you know network connections out, anything that I'm using the proxy for to be up first. So I, I start that up. Then I have tools like code server. Then I have tail scale, which facilitates our VPN access, pretty important. Then is things like Cloudflare tunnels and dynamic DNS. So we have those start up next. Then I have the Plex server. Following the Plex server is all the Plex related apps like Prowler, Radar, Sonar, etc. Those will start after Plex because they kind of depend on Plex in a way, um, you know, not to function or start, but you'd want Plex up prior to having these up so that, you know, you can ensure things are talking in the right order. Anyway, and so on and so forth. Um, you'll see the list go down like that. If I just click on Docker again, we can see all of our containers are stopped. And I do see that there are some updates. So what I might do is actually update them first. Okay, with our updates done and our server ready to go, everything is stopped. You know, we don't have VMs on mine, but if you do, you've got those stopped. And we're making sure that nothing's basically using the server at the moment. It's just sitting nice and idle. Then we can start looking at the upgrade. Now, if you click on here, you'll see that you know, we're at the latest version on stable release. So what we need to do if you're not on a beta release is go to tools, go to update OS. And you'll see here under the next tab, you can choose the version that we want to, to use. Now, obviously I want the latest beta version. There are There is a change log here with release notes, which I will link in the video description for you as well. Um, and it also explains the version of the Linux kernel too. Now guys, one last time, I just wanna make sure I say it, this is a beta, so please, you know, let me do the risk for you. That's what I'm doing in this video, so you don't have to. Uh, but if you have a spare server, a spare VM, you know, we've shown how you can run it as a VM in the past. Um, use that and, and test it out that way. So you'll be confronted with this page. It asks you to confirm the version upgrade that you wanna perform. We're gonna say confirm and start update. So basically sit back, relax, get yourself coffee and we'll come back. Now once the upgrade's complete, it's gonna have a message on there telling you to just watch out for the banner that tells you to reboot. So make sure you look for that. We can see at the top, it's ready for its restart. So we can now go ahead to reboot and we'll go from 6.12.13 to version 7, beta 4. 
So we'll wait for that to reboot, and then I'll come back to you once it's done. Alright guys, so after nervously watching the console load up and hoping that the server starts up without issue, we're back on the home screen and we can sign in and continue. Okay, so we're signed in and we're ready to go. Uh, first thing I noticed is there's some plugins that need to be updated, so we'll make sure we do that immediately. Uh, because we're on a new version, obviously plugins can change version as well. They may also be non-compatible, so you want to make sure you get onto that um, immediately. So we'll update those now by going to the plugins tab and update. Okay, updates are done. We'll click done. Let that reload and I can see that we're all up to date now. Now some of these may still be out of date. I'm not 100% sure. You won't know for sure unless you go through each of them, but I'm just going to go from there. And we can see that obviously the CPU is starting up and things are starting to take place. So what does Unraid 7 bring us? Unraid 7 brings enhancements across the board while trying to maintain compatibility with previous setups. So whether you're looking for better storage options with ZFS, more control over VMs, or integrated plugins for easier management, Unraid 7 has something for all of us. So the devs have collaborated with some key community members on features like ZFS pools, a revamped v VM manager, and built-in plugins that make the interface more user-friendly. So let's break down the highlights. Now immediately on the main dashboard, you'll see that the display looks a lot cleaner and a little bit different. We still have our snapping options so we can move stuff the way we like, but the graphics and the um, color grading I find a little bit easier on the eyes and it's just so much cleaner. So I think they've done a really good job here. And as you scroll down, you'll look at the system graphs. We now have these you know, fancy little pie graphs going. We can click on the, the info sign there and get all that info as well. But this is a much easier visualization of what our system's doing and I really like that. If we come down further, we've even got uh, airflow showing now across RPM fans. Now mine aren't connected you know, correctly, so you may see that little wonky there. Um, we also have our Plex Stream app plugin that we've got going. And it looks like this location seems okay. I'm not sure if that's up to date and I need to do anything with it, so I'm just going to leave it for now. But otherwise, looks pretty good. We'll head over to the main tab now. And one of the biggest changes in Unraid 7 is the expanded ZFS support. Now you hear me changing between ZFS and ZFS. Guys, don't worry about it. It's just an English thing. Um, including hybrid pools. So now you can create ZFS pools with multiple layers, enabling advanced setups um, for those that are looking to optimize performance and reliability. You'll even have the option to recover from multiple drive failures if the pool is set up with enough redundancy. Another big feature is Lux encryption on ZFS pools, so L-U-K-S, adding an extra layer of security to our storage. Now encryption is especially useful if you're storing sensitive data and want that peace of mind. So that gives us the extra bit of security in this version too. A word of caution though, once you upgrade a ZFS pool to Unraid 7, it won't be mountable in older versions of Unraid. So if you're trying out the beta, make sure you won't need to roll back and use the pool in an older version guys. Top warning. Next, we have the VM Manager features. Let's talk about the updated VM Manager. So it has some serious upgrades. You can now clone and snapshot VMs directly from the interface, making backups and testing much, much easier. And if you're a power user, there's a new inline XML view, letting you see exactly how your GUI settings translate to the underlying VM config. All I've done there is click the Windows 11 template, and it's given us all of our options for VM now as well. It's much, much more fleshed out, easier to understand, and has a lot of the familiar settings that we know from previous videos as well. Now you can see here, we can hide the XML or show the XML in line, and we can also do that with the view up the top too. You can also use pass-through for EV dev devices like game controllers, adding new possibilities for gaming or remote desktop setups. Plus, there are improved template options for Windows VM, so you can set up everything from clock sync to optimize virtual hardware right from the start. One thing I really appreciate in Unraid 7 is the integration of popular plugins right into the system. So plugins like Dynamics, File Manager, GUI Search, and Unlimited Width plugin are now built into the web interface. So this means easier file management for us, uh, faster setting searches, and a UI that scales better on larger screens. So we don't have to go and get that stuff every time um, we set up the server or, or need to get these basics installed. Another new tool is the outgoing proxy manager. 
which centralizes proxy settings. This is handy if you're using community apps or other plugins that require specific internet access settings. We can configure those in here. For Docker users, Unraid 7 has some big updates too. First, there's now an option to set a Docker PID limit to prevent fork bombing or runaway processes that crash your system. This is especially useful if you're running multiple containers on limited hardware. Unraid 7 now supports the Overlay 2 storage driver for Docker, which is a welcome change. Overlay 2 offers improved performance and stability compared to older drivers, and it's now the default choice for new installations. And for networking, Unraid now includes integrated support for Tailscale VPN through a plugin. This is great for those who want to secure remote access without some complex configs, and it even supports HTTPS certificates for easy web GUI access through Tailscale. So the massive improvement there, so well done to the Unraid team. Now, since this is a beta, there are a few known issues to keep in mind. For instance, if you're using ZFS pools, you might see some warnings about unsupported features. The good news is that these warnings are harmless. Your pools still work as expected. Just remember, once upgraded, ZFS pools won't be mountable in those previous versions of Unraid. Some other limitations include some issues with spin down on certain older Marvel controllers and some quirks with Docker container settings on IPv6 networks. Don't know many people that are really using IPv6, but it's worth mentioning anyway. The dev team is actively working on these though, guys, and many will be resolved in future updates. So don't stress too much about it. Now, if you're ready to test out Unraid 7, upgrading is straightforward, but there are a few steps to keep in mind when you first boot up. Some file systems might show as auto, don't worry, that's just a one-time update. If you decide to roll back, you'll want to use the new config tool to reset your pool settings before you downgrade. So in tools and the new config, you can then do that here. This preserves all the slot assignments and keeps hybrid pools from getting misconfigured in older versions. Now, another cool setting that I like as a little bonus for you is if you go through any of the settings, you can now favorite them as well. So let's say with network settings, we want to favorite that. We can do that and now we have a favorites tab where we can just go to you know the top things that we want to get access to regularly and that just makes it so much easier to navigate again with the search bar as well now integrated we can search for nearly anything inside the server and take us straight there so a really well done to the unraid team unraid 7 is looking fantastic and it's been great to follow the development this far and see how much of a powerhouse unraid has become uh, into 2025 and that's a wrap on what's new in Unraid 7 Beta. From the expanded ZFS and VM support to built-in plugins and tail scale integration, Unraid 7 brings a lot to the table. It's exciting to see the features added and I can't wait to see what's next. Let me know in the comments what you think of Unraid 7, what features you're most excited about. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and check out the links below for more info on Unraid 7. Uh, and duplicacy for backups. We've also got a link in there if you'd like to purchase a license for Unraid while also helping us out on the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I can't wait to share more about Unraid 7 in the future. We'll go into more deep dives, of course, around ZFS, around Docker, um, around Tailscale plugin. We'll go through all of that together. So thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next Ibricorp video.